hit the button and if everything went smooth and well, we are live. <laughs> so um, let me welcome all of you to our webinars. Um, meet the experts at webinars. And um, as we said in the short introduction or in the short preparation, we are always thinking how can we make the first impression very exciting. And I think, um, yeah, this microscope there, uh, thank you, uh, Benedict and team for sharing this, um, is already guiding us into the right direction, what we are going to look at uh, today. Um, and um, yeah, first of all, allow me to say hello to all of you. Um, and maybe you can just say, uh, Jemsen, we, we, we start with the person who is uh, very, very far away. <laughs> yeah, where the sun rises earlier than you. <laughs> yeah, I, I well say uh, greetings, warm greetings from Singapore. This is Jameson. Yeah, James and our uh, vice president, uh, great to have you here. Oh, but maybe I should have uh, started with uh, our guests first. Um, so, um, Benedict, maybe you can just short, shortly say hello. Yes, also good morning from my side here, North Germany is calling. So, <laughs> pleasure to be here. Great. Thank you, Benedict. Too. Uh, great to have you on board. And then we have Johannes. Good morning to everybody. This is Johannes from Silkotech in Bad Homburg, Germany, near Frankfurt. So, good morning to everybody. Good afternoon to the people from Asia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's uh, yeah, I think it's it, it's great. Um, we actually we have the situation that Johannes is the closest one to us, not that far away, and then no. in the north of Germany, uh, uh, Benedict, um, and uh, yeah, Singapore obviously is most far away. So, Jemsen, are we live? Did it work? It's working now. It's live. Okay. Yeah, that, that sounds good. That gives us uh, a lot of re relaxing. Okay. Um, meet the experts webinar in PSG. Uh, as, as you might know, we always love to play a little bit around with our slogan. And uh, so at the preparation, we sometimes called it the perfect surface guaranteed <laughs> um, for PSG. Um, obviously, I mean, many people might know PSG and our definition stands for the perfect sample gas uh, solution. That is, that is creative. <laughs> yeah, not not very. <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> it is it is not very creative. But um, I must admit that I'm super happy and very thankful to have these um, yeah two guests and these two experts today in our webinar. Mm, when you see the road where we came from in our webinars and in the, in the past webinars, uh, the first Meet the Expert webinars, we uh, invited the analyzer companies. Um, Gems, we always said the big guys, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, I think it was very interesting for our audience to see, okay, we have the sample handling components, but also how is this harmonized and connected um, with the analyzer system? Because at the end, um, only if these two components are working in a yeah, perfect harmony, um, the analyzer result will be great. And um, when we were thinking about how can we extend our webinars here, we were also thinking, okay, we, we have to go more in detail and I must admit from what we are going to see here in, in, the, in the webinar today, we will be very much in detail and we will look at um, yeah, very uh, small, um, yeah, let's say dim dimensions or at, um, very small details. So um, again, great to have you on board. Um, I would also like to give an outlook of what is uh, the, the next uh, episodes or the upcoming events in our Meet the Experts webinars. Um, today we have the topic of surface treatment. Uh, then we will have uh, the, the company Thomas with the peristaltic and condensate pumps. 
in our schoolers, we will talk about sampling pumps with K and F. Uh, then we have another, and I'm very happy uh, that we can welcome SIG here um, as uh, also one of the leading companies uh, as uh, OEM and um, analyzer solutions for SEMS and process analysis technologies, Raycam, and finally SRAM. So, um, yeah. I'm very excited uh, to have this outlook and to share this outlook. Um, and uh, I'm also very excited that we have the chance to go into these all these small details because typically in our solutions, in, in every good solution, the detail of the detail at the end is responsible for a good, um, uh, for a good final product. Okay. If you missed this session, and um, this time I also want to thank Tobias, uh, who is uh, in the back, uh, let's say, and um, who will share all of this link and all this information. So um, these sessions are also recorded in on our YouTube on our YouTube channel, um, so you will have the chance to see the webinars uh, even in a later stage. Um, on YouTube. So if you if there is any problems or any issues, nothing will be lost. Okay, so then, um, yeah, let's have a look into the agenda today. Um, first of all, Jemsen and I will do the introduction why um, the surface of probe tubes is so relevant to our uh, solutions or can be so relevant, I must say. Um, and uh, yeah, then we will have a chance because I think also for everyone who's watching, it's very interesting to hear um, the company Henkel, what is the what is the background? What is their competence? What is their strengths? Um, and the same with the company Silcotech. And um, again, this is something I really would like to outline. It's so great to have um, yeah these two uh, um, yeah, let's say options for surface treatment here in one webinar. So I'm, I'm very happy that you both um, agreed uh, to, to do this with us. Um, and then we will obviously have an introduction of what is electro polishing, how does that uh, really work, um, and how what uh, stands behind silconert uh, coating. Um, and so that at the end, um, we will give you, uh, I would, I hope we can give you a very good summary of, um, yeah, what is these uh, two technologies about. Okay. And this time we really, um, yeah, uh, hope to have enough time for our Q and A session. We know it's very special, the topic, but, uh, yeah. Please be so kind and uh, just share your comments. Just share, um, yeah, uh, if, if there's any uh, questions left. So we are, we have these experts here on board, and we are happy to to answer your questions. Okay, Jimson, mm -hmm. why, why why do you think it's relevant what we are talking here today? It is absolutely relevant. You know, we used to say that it is the most underestimated a black holes that many people are blinded. You know, having the uh, service background for 10 years in my early part of my career, all right, I do a lot of uh, analyzer maintenance, uh, doing calibration, validations. There are so many times where, where you know, we, we, we really, we only going through so much trouble then to realize one thing. The line is either contaminated or the line is a wrong material that we used. There mm -hmm. are areas whereby there are memories effect, areas where there are absorptions, desorptions effect along the line. And it has served the biggest surface, you know, area again, you know, in, in the entire sampling system. So there are so much that we can share. I'm just wondering in one hour, are we able to cover, you know? So let, let's hear from the expert. Yeah, no, absolutely. What we wanted to do here is we just wanted to say, this is a typical PNID, what we already shared in other webinars. So we have the sampling situation, depending on the application, if it's a SAMP system, we have 
extractive, hot extractive gas sampling probes where we take the sample. Um, if it's a process analytical, um, it, it depends. The, the, there might be no dust, uh, so uh, there might be no filtration needed. But then comes the part, and this will be the main part of our talks today, then comes the transportation of the probe. And um, I mean, Jameson, I think in the last sessions when we said underestimated, we were thinking more not of the surface, but yeah, also a heated sample line. It looks it looks relatively easy, right? Um, but also the, that the heat uh, is um, uh, at the, at, in all areas of the line. You will have the same heat that will ensure the holding temperatures. Um, these are all the details we already discussed, but I think it's very interesting to have a deeper look how is a heated sample line at the end configured. And um, yeah, maybe this is just a 3D drawing um, of, our, um, uh, of one of our heated sample lines. And um, I would also like to show this uh, here. Um, hopefully, you can you can see this. Okay. Um, so what we are talking here is the probe tube, um, and uh, the probe tube, um, which is in contact with the probe. We have many, many, many varieties of um, probe tubes, but uh, like Jemsen already said depending on the length of the heated line, this of the probe tube, um, this can represent the biggest surface in the entire sampling system. So I think that's the reason why it makes complete sense um, to have a deeper look into this. Maybe I can also shortly at least uh, use the chance um, to show you the different configurations and the way of different configurations of our heated lines. This is just our, um, our web page, and here in the download section, you can find, um, oh, maybe I'm going to switch to English. Um, so, and here in the download section, um, you can find um, the match code for the heated sample line. And there you can already see, uh, let me go down here. Um, here you see the match code system. And there you already get an idea how many different varieties of sample tubes um, of process or probe tubes um, are really possible. And uh, the gems, and this is something you also said in the other webinars, you, we always have to have a look at the application. So we cannot use PTFE for all purpose. Uh, and um, yeah, sometimes uh, stainless steel is not the right application. And sometimes we do need a coating, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I also tried to find some pictures. Um, I mean, this is uh, already something Jameson, what you indicated that it can, yeah, contribute or represent um, 50 to 90 percent of the surface area um, in the heated sample line, uh, or is represented by the heated sample line, and um, yeah, so there can be some effects, and um, that's the reason why we are looking into this today. Underestimated is a good, uh, I, I was searching for a picture. See, this is a plant uh, we once uh, visited and um, you, might get an, you might catch an idea here uh, about the length of the heated sample lines. And um, I know, I mean, in general, every engineer, uh, in, when he has the possibility to design um, uh, the system, he might see that he will move um, the analyzer system very close to the point where the sample is taken. But Jemsen, we also know in many applications that it is not possible to move very close to this area, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
and um so and 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 then um yeah i just wanted to give an impression uh, this is this was a very very long line we delivered uh, so the sampling point was somewhere up here and uh, the analyzer room where all of the lines came together um yeah which was actually i think it was not a 300 meter line but um it was a very long line and yeah. uh, so i think it's clear that all of this can have um, a big impact um, on uh, uh, on the on the measurement. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, so I would like um, here. We already have a picture um, of the stainless of stainless steel coils, um, which are used in the production of our heated sample lines. But now, be before we go too much into details, uh, I would like to hand over um, to Benedict from the company Henkel so that he can share, uh, he can give us an, an overview what his, his company really does. And um, yeah, so Benedict. Well, thank you, Jörg. So you should see now my presentation live uh, yes. uh, again. Welcome. Well, what you ask, what is Henkel? Yeah, Henkel, we are a contractor for chemical and electrochemical surface treatment of stainless steel mainly. Yeah. So uh, we have various uh, uh, processes uh, in-house uh, for metal surface treatment. So it's chemical pickling, it's uh, chemical polishing, electro polishing. We'll take uh, we'll we'll take a closer look afterwards. Uh, chemical passivation and uh, component cleaning and cleaning room cleaning, though, especially for semiconductor industry, industries, so this is uh, a, a very uh, wide range of applications we are we are talking about here. So uh, some maybe some facts uh, and data about Henkel. So we are a, a company founded in '77, a family business now in second generations. Uh, we have uh, uh, three sites in in Europe, uh, in Austria, Germany, and Hungary. Uh, and uh, approximately 180 people, uh, according uh, certification, according to 9,000, 14,000 won. And well, material and design is important. This is, uh, of course, uh, uh, an issue. But uh, our mission is that the surface shows the value of the components. So, or uh, this is very important uh, if you're talking about very sensitive uh, productions and, and products. The surface treatment here is is a very uh, is a very big influence on the success of uh, uh, a plant or a process. Uh, we talk, well, we are, when we are talking more or less about stainless steel here in this in this webinar, so uh, uh, we have uh, processes for ferritic, austenitic, duplex stainless steels, but we also have, uh, we offer also processes for other alloys like nickel, aluminum, copper, titanium, and so on. I don't want to go all the list uh, completely through, especially alloys for medical industry. So this is more or less uh, the, the range of material where I have uh, surface treatment processes. Uh, wow. and, so, uh, so is the, uh, Benedict, if I may ask, so yes. the, 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 the numbers of treatments you do, is this complete mix or is there a majority or? Yes, I would say majority is definitely stainless steel. So it's, uh, I think, a wide range of applications are austenitic stainless steel when we talk about uh, pharmaceutical industry, biotech industry, semiconductor industry. When we move to, to chemical industry, then uh, because of corrosion issue, uh, higher alloy steels like also nickel, uh, nickel alloys or titanium uh, are an issue. And of course, you have some special alloys, uh, nickel titanium alloys for medical industry, where uh, uh, which, which are also for various issues uh, important there yeah right so okay. the range of uh, and so by this the range of parts we can do electro polishing uh, is, is from small yeah a stent uh, 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 for example here shown uh, tubes fittings and also the big ones tanks and also the the ones we cannot transport where we come to the customer and do service on site okay so a, a brief give you a brief idea on uh, what this Henkel all about yeah, that's great. That's great. By the way, do you know when 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 this uh, yeah let's say technology was was founded really? I think the founded it was uh, in the 1950s. I would say around yeah you know, uh, within uh, the area of of uh, metallurgical issue where you try to 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 uh, clean 
uh, surfaces and then an analyze systems uh, uh, surfaces. So this was okay. the first range, and then I think the uh, semiconductor semiconductor industry was the first industry which really uh, seen the, the advantages of, of of material removal process by more or less of cleaning. You know, when we talk about adhesion and desorption of, of, of gases and so, uh, so this was, a, I would say, the first real industrial application. And then it moved uh, to many other applications uh, uh, okay. on and on. Yeah. Oh, so, so that's, that's interesting. That's interesting what, what comes next, right? I mean, uh, we'll see. Um, yeah, I, I think it's yeah. interesting to see that yeah. it comes from such an industry and then it also has impacts in, like you said, for example, the chemical yes. industry, many applications we are talking here, yeah. right? Okay, good. Yeah, um, so, okay. Uh, yeah, Johannes, let me switch over to you. And um, if you go to the presentation mode, yeah, there we go. Yes. Johannes, we're, yes. We're super Hello. smooth. <laughs> Hello again to everybody. I hope you can all see my screen. And thank you also to Mr. Ahrens and uh, PSG, uh, AGT PSG, for giving us the opportunity to to present Silcotec and our products in this uh, webinar in front of your audience. So thank you very much. Um, sure. Yeah, during my presentation, um, I want to give a quick introduction about the company Silcotec, about the um, CVD process, about our coatings, and of course about the properties. Um, so let me quickly start with some um, yeah, history, with some Silcotec background. So Silcotech itself was uh, founded in 2009, but experiences with the CVD silicon coatings goes back to the 1980s. Uh, at this time, Silcotech was part of Restec called the Restec Performance Coatings Group. And Restec is a company very well known in the chromatography market, a um, manufacturer of chromatography columns. And the initial reason to um, invent this, this inert silicon coatings was to make stainless steel tubes, so the capillary tubes Mr. Ernst just showed before, to make them as inert as fused silica quartz glass tubes. Without mm. the disadvantage, without having the disadvantages of the fused silica tubes, which are obviously low pressure stability, no bending is, is possible with, uh, with, with these tubes, so Restec invented this um, um, coatings to improve their products, to improve the performance of their products. And then during the time at Restec, when of course the coatings were limited to the chromatography market and the chromatography applications, um, the Restec Performance Coatings Group discovered that there are many other applications for the coatings, for oil and gas applications, semiconductor applications, bioanalytical applications. So this, uh, um, this created the idea of separating from Restec, separating from the, um, from the focus on the chromatography market and found um, an independent company, which was then done in uh, 2009. So the Silcotec or the Restec Performance Coatings Group spun off from Restec and uh, formed Silcotec, completely independent now and open for, um, for many different markets. And this turned out to be the right position because uh, from this point, we were able to, 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 um, yeah, to apply our coatings for, for parts that were used in many different applic uh, applications and markets. And um, yeah, um, Silcotech grew. Now we are up to 80 people, our headquarters in the, in the US. And um, yeah, we we just doubled our capacity in 2019, and um, yeah, are still still growing and still um, on a on a good way. Okay, so it yeah. seems like there, there's some demand <laughs> for your application. Yes, for your, for fortunately. Your so <laughs> yes, the, our main market also switched a little bit from chromatography and is now more in the semiconductor industry, um, where we. Where we also coat many st stainless steel parts for corrosion resistant inert surfaces. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's the main industry now. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's 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 interesting. Uh, uh, interesting to hear. So, what was the first applications you went into when, when from the uh, GC application? Um, what was the the first ones? Oil and gas, probably. So we we coat a lot of parts for the oil and gas industry. 
for sulfur analyzing. So um, we, we make the stainless steel surfaces inert to prevent sulfur absorption. So I think okay. I think this this was the first uh, this was the first um, yeah application besides the chromatography market. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. And Johannes, maybe just one question uh, for mm -hmm. maybe the the viewers even from 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 Europe. So you are representing uh, Silkotech here in Germany, or exactly, exactly. Okay. We are we are a sales office in Germany, and uh, yeah, we are representing uh, Silkotech in Germany. So okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's interesting to to see and to hear. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so rest of the presentation would then be technical background. So therefore, yeah. I would give yeah. back to uh, Mr. Henkel. Yeah, we, we we do this later. Okay. Wow. Now, first of all, thank you for your introduction, and mm -hmm. let's switch. Um, Benedict, I can see your screen screen now. Um, and we see something I think you have to explain. <laughs> yes, so uh, thank you, I will, I will try my best, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I'd like to give you an idea of what is electropolishing. So I gave you here uh, uh, three, uh, well, one sentence in three lines, uh, what, what's it all about. So it's, uh, it's an, an anodic, an anodic dissolution of, uh, of metal, yeah, uh, by a more or less anodic oxidation in an electrolyte uh, and using a external direct current source. Yeah, so if just to, uh, you can also easily explain that it's, that the electropolishing process is a reverse of a of a galvanic process. Shall mean we remove material from the surface. Uh, five, ten, fifteen, twenty micrometers. I'll I'll give you an idea of, uh, later. Yeah, when mm -hmm. we talk about tube electropolishing, this is an and and an, an, yes, yeah, so this picture shows nicely how how it it works. Yeah, so we have uh, mm -hmm. the tube, the stainless steel tube, for example, as the anode. Yeah. We have uh, a cathode inside, we have uh, an electrolyte uh, for this process, and then we have the, the, the power source, and uh, this is more or less uh, the setup for electropolishing. Mm. And when we turn on the power, yeah, uh, this, uh, then uh, we are capable to smooth the surface by electropolishing. This, this, uh, this uh, uh, drawing here nicely shows uh, what happens before and after electropolishing. Uh, yeah. So it's uh, mm -hmm. kind of smoothening, and uh, uh, and uh, by electropolishing with a uh, material removal of approximately 15 to 20 micrometers. Yeah. You know? Okay. Uh, yeah. This yeah. is a lot of theory now, uh, and uh, I think uh, nicely seen also uh, when you look uh, on a surface by microscope. This is a picture you see uh, in the um, you see in the beginning. Yeah. yeah? So and we'd like me... to give you an idea uh, how this works. Yeah, what, yeah. what we can see. Let me yeah. switch over here. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. So this yeah. is now this is now my colleague giving you an idea. So we have prepared a sample here. We cut a piece of a, an internal electropolished uh, tube. Yeah. Uh, okay. And now we we, we place it uh, below a microscope. Yeah. Wow. And okay. uh, uh, by and this, it's, it's 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 a standard light light microscope with magnification around uh, 200 times up to 500 times. And okay. uh, well, what what you can see is we'll switch now to the microscope. Yeah, uh, and uh, this is more or less what you finally see. So it's it's a, it's a surface uh, uh, magnification of around two uh, of, of 200 times. Uh, uh, wow. Indicating here on the left, and uh, you you see nicely a very smooth uh, topography of the surface yeah, with, uh, with light elevation. Uh, and this is a, uh, and then when you have a look, closer look on the surface, you, you, you see it as a shiny surface. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, so this is something you can even see without the, the microscope, right? So uh, yes, the, shi the brightness, the shiny, yeah, yes, yeah. the brightness, the brightness of the, of the surface after electro polishing is a, is a typical, um, uh, uh, application, yeah, but, but you, how you can see it, yeah, that your that the process was applied successfully, yeah. The okay. what uh, the capability of the process uh, uh, is giving in this uh, shows you this picture here. So, uh, the nice way of is that you can uh, by the by the uh, electric uh, uh, power we can control the process, yeah, and and uh, mm -hmm. remove material step by step. So this, for example, is a is a, a starting surface here of an uh, tube ID. 
a half inch tube with 316L starting with an array of 0 0.33 micrometers. And when we start our process, so we slowly start removal, uh, remove the, the peaks uh, of the surface Yeah, here, uh, uh, five micrometers removal, and we go on here to 10 microns and then uh, up to 25 microns. And you see that uh, it's, it's nicely uh, smoothening of the surface. No, wow. So okay. So, so, so that, that, that means uh, depending on the final quality you would like to achieve, you have to do it different times or? No, this is, this is, uh, uh, this is a one run. So it's, it's, it's okay. up to you how long. So the material removal rate is in, uh, in, in this uh, proportional, is direct, direct uh, proportion to, to the electro polishing time. Yeah. Okay. And so as long uh, you uh, electro polish, uh, then uh, you, you, you're removing material. So roughly with an, uh, with an alternate, alternative stainless steel, you can say around one to two micrometers per minute electro polishing. So just giving oh, okay. you an idea. And uh, often it's, uh, it is asked uh, how, how far we can remove uh, or we can reduce the RA, the surface yeah. roughness value. Yeah. And uh, uh, I think the capability of the process is around uh, uh, 30 to 50 percent uh, shall mean if you start with an RA by one micrometer, you are capable to remove down to 0 0.5 to 0 0.7 yeah, uh, okay. micrometer RA. So okay. This is uh, roughly an idea. Yeah. Okay. Um, and Benedict, if I may ask you a question, sometimes um, uh, there, in in some specifications or in some RFQs uh, uh, we received, or yeah, really in the, in the specifications, it only says electro polished. What, what what are you what what are you doing um, with? Uh, is this very common in your industry, or do you also see that, or is is always that the final quality will be defined how, how do you uh, do you experience this so unfortunately yes often uh, people ask us just electro polish yeah? and this makes makes uh, the, the life for us a little bit uh, complicated because we need to specify the process and for us uh, it's always uh, very smooth uh, and uh, and very smart if we if we get a specification where the process is is, is described where uh, starting RA is, is is defined or we uh, ask or we are told where we have to go uh, which which final RA should be achieved and so on uh, so uh, also the final cleaning steps after electro polishing are very important because when you are uh, you don't want to uh, to contaminate the surface after electro polishing by any rinsing uh, steps, for example. So all in all, any kind of, of work instruction, specification, SOP, whatever you call it, yeah, is very helpful. It must not be a uh, hundred pager. So I think one page is quite uh, enough, yeah, to define what uh, uh, what uh, the customer wants and what we should do. And this is very helpful then for us. So this is uh, uh, an advice at this point of view, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No, but it's interesting uh, that you experience the same the same issues or the same problems because uh, yeah. when whenever we receive uh, requests uh, with the specification, we have to ask back, and then yeah. you sometimes find out that yeah that there is no real definition of um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. because it's also important to 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 specify because. Um, uh, there is a in in, in the, the, the the guys in in, in the states, for example, also uh, def, uh, define uh, uh, that, for example, a flash electro polishing is not allowed. Yeah, this is something uh, where you just remove one, two, three micrometers. Yeah, okay. and this is also it's electro polish because your your your, your component uh, was in the bath. You have you have uh, electrolyte. You have uh, so it's, but in the end, uh, the experience tells that all the benefits. And this is what we what we are talking now within the next two three slides is the benefits uh, you only generate if you remove 10 15 20 micrometers of the surface by electro polishing and so right. from this point of because of this and, uh, and also because of this point of view any kind of specification is very helpful yeah for okay. us okay yeah. so let me let me summarize two points we, we need a specification in best case yeah yes and uh, the starting material or let me say maybe the starting quality is essential for the final result yes 
This is very yeah. essential. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Well, and why why we do electro polishing? So this is maybe uh, also interesting. So it's uh, 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 in the end, it's the optimization of the surface properties. Yeah. Especially here, we're talking about mainly of stainless steel alloys. Yeah. So uh, I already mentioned uh, that. Uh, the process uh, supports a smoothing of the of, of the surface. Yeah, we've seen uh, nicely in the pictures shown already. Yeah, this leads to a optimal cleaning ability, so called easy to clean surfaces. I think why it's this picture nicely shows why why uh, cleaning might be easier uh, after electro polishing. I think the picture on the left side here uh, here shows that. Uh, here you have a quite with a topography here, which is high high peaks and and, and low valleys, yeah. And uh, uh, here to the to the right, you have a, a topography which is a little bit smaller, yeah, which is uh, which do doesn't show so so high peaks, yeah. And if you just see these red dots as contamination, yeah, any mm -hmm. particles, whatever, or also uh, uh, gas molecules, yeah, then uh, it's quite easy to to see that uh, to understand here that uh, the cleaning. Uh, on the right picture here, it might be much more easier than if you have all these uh, your, your your red dots here in this in these valleys. So this is uh, how we uh, define the, the the easy to clean surfaces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, another advantage, of course, is uh, especially when we talk about electro polishing of stainless steel alloys, is that we we as I already mentioned, we clean the surface, so we get the pure metallic uh, structure of the stainless steel, uh, we, gave, we get the passive surface, and this also leads to high corrosion resistance, which is uh, also a big advantage, especially for uh, corrosive environments. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and also a big important part is also that uh, we, by electro polishing, the, we reduce affinity to coating. Yeah. Why does coating happen on the surface? It's more or less it's the same approach here that uh, the layer built up here. I think it's 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 easier uh, on on surfaces with a bigger topography, with a, with a higher uh, energy level of the surface. And when we remove this topography and reduce energy level of the surface, adhesion and desorption is much more uh, uh, positive. Yeah. And then suddenly here, uh, coating is it's it's, it's it doesn't uh, happen. So much, yeah, or, or too uh, uh, too fast, and so from this point of view, also uh, uh, so-called memory effects uh, can be avoided by this, yeah. and uh, this leads to uh, uh, particle-free surfaces and and uh, also uh, positive uh, issues on when we talk about uh, outgassing rates and so on. These are some properties uh, special industries ask for. Yeah, Benedict, if you can do me a favor and go one slide back. Um, yes. And James, James, and I think that's important for uh, here. I feel our call <laughs> <laughs> in, in the area of the memory effects, um, yeah. because the problem in our measurement is when we have the collection of these particles or of these of these of these items, James, and we would not measure it, right? Mm -hmm. it, it will, there is a. Uh couple of uh, possible outcome. Uh, one would be a uh, result of a smaller amount of concentration. For right. example, if somebody were to measure uh, some gases, particularly in moisture, mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, you know, nobody will come to a point that they, they want to do a simulation of moisture. And they were talking about T90. It is almost impossible to get to achieve a T90 without first understanding what material of this line they are talking about. If they don't right. address the line, it's gone, you know? Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. And, and, and I think the theory is that um, the selection of these particles uh, in, in this mountain area, let's say, that uh, results into lower concentration measurement at one point, and then when, when, when these particles are moved maybe some or some more of them all together then you will see a peak right so yeah. you can at the end say that your measurement is never right yeah yeah <laughs> that's, yeah that's probably yeah. the from from, yeah. from i would say from the sample handling component from the analyzer yeah. line um yeah. this is the the impact or the issue we have there yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. okay yeah thank you benedict uh, for, for outlining this 
Well, where does uh, this electro polishing uh, of uh, find applications? So here, just to give you an idea, so a wide range of applications, and a lot of these applications also, uh, well, uh, define a need of uh, for of electro polished tubes and fittings for transportation of, of fluids or gases, uh, and so this is a major application here, uh, especially when you when you uh, build then special constructions like tube bundles or any manifolds or mm -hmm. whatever in, and also mentioned as uh, in the beginning uh, uh, yeah also uh, the electro polishing of this of these heated sample lines yeah uh, mm -hmm. is, is is an application so uh, when we talk about tube electro polishing then we have uh, the capability of of uh, electro polishing of, of straight lengths so this is about six to seven meters straight lengths uh, tubing uh, electro polishing uh, mm -hmm. uh, the process is more or less the same yeah here um, and uh, uh, and, and, and then the further application of courses uh, that they also are capable to do uh, to do internal electro polishing of coal tubing yeah up to 100 feet yeah where uh, with the same approach here uh, uh, and uh, dimension uh, limited then of uh, of course because of the tube lengths uh, to maximum i would say half inch here as displayed yeah uh, yeah, but, uh, and I think that, for... that's yeah. Let me let me outline this uh, mm -hmm. because I think this is super exciting, and that's also the reason why I'm very happy that we can announce our partnership here, uh, mm -hmm. because this is something unique in in Europe, right? So um, yeah, I think uh, this is this is great to see and um, uh, a very rich solution. Yeah. Okay, now I have to I have to be the timekeeper. Um, yes, Johannes, are you? But thank you so much, Benedict. I think okay. we <laughs> get back. Um, yeah, the presentation works, Johannes. Um, Perfect. The mic okay. is yours. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. First of all, I would like to give you an introduction about our coding process. So it's called the CVD process, which means chemical vapor deposition. That means we put parts into a vacuum chamber parts like also fittings, tubes, valves, um, pressure regulators, mass flow controllers. We put the parts into vacuum chamber. The vacuum chamber then gets into an oven. This is heated up um, to like 400 to 450C. Therefore, we are also limited regarding the substrate materials because substrate materials that cannot handle the, the temperature of minimum 400C can of course not be coated. So, so this, this is for example, for all the polymer parts, so we can not coat Teflon, uh, PTFA or, or other parts uh, or, or other polymer parts. Um, we because mainly they would, coat- they would, just, they would just melt, right? Exactly. They would not okay. survive the, the temperature of 400C. Also, for example, we coat, as I said, we coat a lot of valves or pressure regulators. In this case, the parts would need to be disassembled before we coat them all the polymer o-rings etc need to be removed we then coat the wetted um, um, stainless steel parts and uh, reassemble the parts after coating so um, that's in that, most that's a service yeah. uh, johannes you, you offer or is the customer has to send the we do not offer ourselves but we have partner companies that uh, that offer right. the, the disassembling the reassembling okay. and helium leak test to assure that the that the part is uh, is still is still gas tight. Yeah. Okay. Um, Good. Yeah. So um, what we do then is that we deposit um, a silicon base layer. Um, so, so all all our coatings are silicon based. Um, this silicon base layer is then already very inert, um, very corrosion resistant. Um, but for special applications, for example, uh, when you need, uh, when you measure uh, trace levels of in, in PPM concentrations, we can then functionalize this surface with um, um, with yeah with a special functionalization with special molecules to make it to make it even uh, even more inert. So similar to the to the electro polishing um, process, it prevents adsorption it prevents memory effects so it just assures that no um uh, that no um yeah no uh, no gases you want to analyze adsorb to the surface and do not reach re do not reach the analyzer 
Okay, so this is so to say your magic or your your knowledge, the competence, the mixture of yes. this is the is the yes. secret. Okay, yeah, yeah that's yes. interesting. Of course. Yeah, and with with these functionalizations, for example, you can then also um, also uh, focus on cor corrosion resistance applications for uh, uh, for inert for inert applications for applications where you need uh, easy cleaning as well so uh, anti adhesive surfaces um, so we can then yeah play a little bit with the surface to 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 make it better for 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 certain applications yeah okay um, what is also special uh, uh, for the coating so first of all it has a very strong bonding to the substrate material so for example Coated, uh, uh, coated tube can be bended um, in a 90 degree angle or, or even stronger. Um, um, on top of that, the coating also creates uh, what we call a diffusion zone. So it interacts a little bit with the, with the, uh, with the substrate material. So um, this, this, this outlines the very, very strong bond bonding to the substrate material and this yeah especially for the coil tubing also very important because you can bend it um, and as I said inside of a gas chromatograph uh, for example without without damaging damaging the coating okay uh, yeah? got it uh, Johannes maybe two questions first of all siliconiert yes. and sulfiniert yes it's it, the it, same it, coating it's, it's, it's the same coating. It's all two it's brands from Silcotec or not? Or no, this, okay. the Sulfinert was was the old name from Restec. So Restec branded the name Sulfinert, and when we separated from from Restec, we had to give the Sulfinert uh, coating a new name because we were not allowed to lose to use the Sulfinert uh, a name as it was branded by Re by Restec. And we, uh, and therefore we called, uh, we now call it at Silcotech Silco Nerd 2000, but it is exactly the same coding. So we often get this question and there's still a lot of uh, requirements out in the market for the Sulfinerd coding. Um, and we still explain it at least once or twice per week that it's the same coding, <laughs> but it's exactly the same coding, no difference. So, okay, coding. yeah, that's, that, that's what I wanted to ask. So this is exactly mm -hmm. the same um, there is no, yeah. there is no difference. And uh, allow me to understand. So you said a ninety degree angle is possible in the bending, yes. right? Yes, yes, yes. So we, but if it, we record, so if it, yeah. if it would go higher, there could be uh, there could be a damage to to the. Mm, not not really. So what we do, we we recommend minimum bend radius, not because the coating can flake off. What can okay. happen is that the stretching creates new surface area, which is then not coated. But the the, the, mm. the bonding of the coating to the substrate is so strong that it will not flake off, so you will not see any flaking. All Another right, thing I, got that, it. I got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One thing I forgot, which could uh, should be also very important for for the for heat trace uh, for heat trace um, lines. So as I said, normally we put parts into vacuum chamber. And then uh, uh, they got into uh, an oven and are, are coated inside and outside. For coil tubing, um, we uh, use the tubing itself as vacuum chamber. So we put uh, we put adapters to the beginning and to the end of the coil tubing. We then evacuate the inside of the coil tubing and then inject the coating gas. Um, the disadvantage is that the outside is not coated. The big advantage is that we can coat uh, coil tubing up to like 700 meter lengths, um, and in most cases, the the outside coating is not that important for our customers. So only the inside coating, um, the inert inside uh, surface is important. Um, yeah, and therefore it's a big advantage that we can code yeah very long long lengths for the coil tubing. Yeah, I think that's going to be an interesting question, uh, uh, Benedict. Uh, also for you, we will come to this later uh, regarding the length, because I just saw from the audience that there's a question regarding the length. Um, okay. And I think we can we can give a good answer for this. OK, thank you, Johannes. Yeah. Yeah, this this slide just shows a comparison of uh, coated sample cylinders and the uh, and uh, the effect of the coating. So if you have a, 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 a sample inside a sample cylinder with, a, for example, mercury, uh, mercury concentration, and the cylinder is not coated, 
all the mercury will absorb to the surface after some days and you are not able to analyze it anymore. If the sample cylinder is coated, this is the line on top, um, you see a more or less stable concentration even after 50 days. So this shows, pr shows pretty good the, the effect of the coating regarding inertness. Mm -hmm. Maybe I think um, it's good, yeah. good, good to explain that you took uh, um, mercury because mercury is known uh, yes, to, <laughs> to, to, to be very the... absorptive. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. But this would be similar for sulfur, ammonia, VOCs, for example. So, um, yeah, the coating is pretty inert against uh, uh, many, many um, yeah, absorptive uh, gases. Okay. Yeah, here, um, here's just a, a um, 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 little picture how it would look like on a on the um, on a straight tube, which would be coated inside and outside. So you have a functional coating layer um, uh, on uh, inside and outside the tube. The coating thickness is round about um, yeah 250 uh, nanometers up to one micrometer. So very very thin. It does not, more or less, not affect tolerances. So we also coat a lot of parts for vacuum applications. We can coat VCR fittings um, without, um, yeah, without um, um, affecting the, the the tightness of these parts. Um, regarding the substrate materials, as I said, we are limited, but mostly, but we can coat like stainless steel. We can coat some aluminum alloys. Um, we can coat special uh, high nickel alloys like um, like Hess alloy or Inconel. Um, we can coat on glass, so we coat, for example, a lot of uh, glass uh, GC inlet liners. And um, what the, uh, and the the properties that the coating creates um, is inertness, corrosion resistance, hydrophobicity, anti adhesive surfaces for for um, applications also in the bioanalytical industry, for example. Um, and what is new, so the, the, I have to correct me a little bit. At the, at the beginning, I said that all our coatings are silicon based. This is not 100% correct anymore. So what we can do now also is that we just put this functionaliza functionalization that, that we normally put on the, on the silicon based layer, we can now also put it directly on, um, Stainless steel surfaces, for example. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So, so but, 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 yeah, would, would you say also the majority is stainless steel in your applications? Yes. Or, uh, okay, so that's uh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I would okay. say at least 70, 75% is all kind of stainless steel uh, sub, uh, material. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Aluminum is aluminum is rising. Um, is strongly rising, but uh, um, it's still mainly stainless steel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So this. Oh, oh sorry, I forgot one slide. So this is a comparison slide for corrosion resistance, just to sh quickly show you the the effect of the coating. So what we did here, we put uh, um, uncoated and then two coated coupons into a into an immersion. And uh, um, just uh, uh, just left it there, uh, there for 24 hours, and then you, you can see that there's a much less corrosion, much less um, corrosion on the uh, coded coupons compared to the uncoded coupon. Yeah. And this is for for many assets. Uh, um, I think this was HCL, but um, coding is very resistant against many assets. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good, great. Okay. Thank you, Johannes, for, for sharing yes. this with us. Um, You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, I think, wow, very interesting and a lot of uh, news and a lot of new information. And there is some questions, so I have to speed up <laughs> so that, mm -hmm. that we are going to have enough time for the Q&A session. Um, yeah, maybe uh, this is something, um, and Benedict, again, thank you for supporting this uh, slide here. Um, and I think it's, it's, uh, that, that's a great overview um, of uh, the different, yeah, let's say, of the different um, technologies um, of, on the one hand side, the Silcotech uh, coatings, which uh, Johannes uh, just explained. Um, 
where also the um, yeah the process is description uh, is is described here. Um, so that really should give a good uh, um, idea, um, for example, regarding the roughness, um, the RRA value, um, which obviously um, in the um, uh, in the circonet covering that uh, there is no change to this. Um, no. And what I would what I would like to show here, or I think uh, um, the, the the great idea here. Um, to combine um, these uh, two technologies is really that you use the best of both worlds, so to say. Um, so um, I, I really think we should share this, this overview um, because it can help um, our customer in the different application to um, yeah, maybe decide what, what is required. Because this is probably also something when we discuss mm -hmm. specifications, um, it is for us very important to understand the process and then uh, to decide yeah, uh, if a combination of the two technologies uh, will be uh, best for this or um, yeah, what is uh, finally the recommendation uh, we do here, right? So um, let me have a look at the different questions which just uh, came. There was one question I've seen, um, Benedict, and this is regarding the length. Um, so uh, is there a limitation on a tube length? I think this question is related to, yeah, it's related to the polishing. Um, can you say something about that? Yes, due to the, to the setup of the, uh, of the electro polishing, uh, we are reduced to up to, uh, 100 feet uh, lengths yeah, for electro polishing of, of coil tubing. Yeah? Um, uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's a, a limiting factor here we have to accept yeah, for, for many reasons and uh, uh, also for the so far applications we have, uh, it's, it's, what it's, it's up to, to this 100 feet, uh, which, will, which work quite nicely. Yeah? Okay, yeah. Um, but I think it's also good to use this webinar because uh, we have many times these discussions and uh, people think that there are uh, yeah, plants around that can produce 300 meter in one scratch, <laughs> electro polished. Uh, yeah, I think we can only recommend to read the specifications relatively carefully. Um, uh, maybe I, I want to comment. I think it. I don't want to say it's not possible in the end, but yeah. I think it's always it's always uh, uh, the ratio between uh, what is what is possible and what is what is needed in the end. Yeah. Right. So it's uh, so it's and, and from this point of view, this hundred feet length was uh, an idea of uh, cooperation with, with with semiconductor industry, which which uses this kind of of coil tubing as as kind of pigtails when when uh, connecting tooling with with with, with the uh, the ultra pure gas distribution system, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, from this point of view, it's it's an application which was limited uh, to yeah, this hundred but, feet. Yeah. But I think it's also very important to say. I mean, if you have an orbital welding of let's say two pieces of uh, one hundred feet uh, um, in 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 the welding itself, uh, you you will not have uh, any big influence on the surface is this something uh, this is, uh, you, you this would is, agree yes. this is this is uh, this is uh, i would say lift reality when we when we look to a semiconductor industry then they produce ultra pure gas distribution systems with hundreds and thousands of meters lengths uh, by orbital welding so from this point of view i think it's 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 uh, the, the the orbital welding technology is available to to uh, to weld uh, Cold tubing in more or less nearly endless dimensions, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. but that's that's the interesting thing. We always yeah. have discussions, and in many of our applications, we see the sample lines seamless, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I think, uh, yeah, um, the, the, the the also the welding uh, quality is probably. Uh, has developed in the past in the past years, right? I can say a lot. Yeah, sometimes yeah. a lot. I would say sometimes it isn't even difficult to 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 find a welding. Yeah, when you have these endless tube systems. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's have a look. Tobias, uh, hey Jörg, for the Q and A, uh, is there some regulation 
define the level of uh, electro polishing method since it depends on the application time. The lengths uh, we, we already discussed. Um, Benedict, can you see this question? I can see this question. I think there is a uh, 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 question number one is a uh, question to electro. Is there some kind of regulations that define the level of electro polishing method? Uh, I think it's there are uh, electro polishing process itself. There are some some standards where electro polishing itself has been defined, yeah, or specified. Mm -hmm. But I would say, uh, uh, for example, uh, the the aerospace industry. Yeah, or some ph pharmaceutical industry, there, is, there are applications or there are standards available. I think uh, in the end, uh, nine out of 10 cases, I think it's a customer specific specification, which is uh, needed to be defined. Even it's, uh, it's, I know from the chemical industry that they have their internal standards where they define different processes. Uh, they, they define material alloy and also then the processes uh, uh, what, what happens with the surface treatment afterwards? Could be electro polishing, okay. could be coating, whatever. So, uh, in okay. many cases, I think it's 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 reasonable to uh, it's uh, or it's, it's to ask uh, what, is there something available? Yeah. Right. Is, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But anyhow, I think we're also happy to support here to okay. uh, put all the, the the figures on one page. Yeah. Yeah. It's also thank you. Part of our job. Yeah. Thank you. No, that's great. Um, Johannes, um, there's one question for you. Is there any regulation mm -hmm. standards, ISO, IP, custom, <laughs> um, required, necessary of using sulfinate coating? Do you know any? Is there something out there? I, I know that the coating cannot be, um, yeah, cannot be tested or not, cannot be, how do you say, regulated on ASTM because ASTM is uh, not allowed for coatings, just for the substrate materials. Besides that, I'm uh, not uh, aware of, of any, to be honest. Of any regulation. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. So, guys, again, we run out of time. Um, I must say I really appreciate it, and I really want to thank you all for, for being here. Um, uh, allow me shortly uh, to invite our uh, the people who look this now to follow to follow our um, yeah AGT PSG our LinkedIn page, but allow me also to outline to follow. Um, uh, I think we posted uh, to be as posted the website of Circotech and of Henkel, um, and also these companies are in LinkedIn. So I think they would be very happy if you follow them as well. So you are you keep posted, you get all the updates. Um, we have a special for our um, people for for the attendance here. Um, so uh, Jemson will be out for a calendly session, so you can book your expert session with Jemson. Jameson, are you are you excited? <laughs> or are you afraid? Are you afraid? I, I, I have to test my threshold. Yeah. <laughs> my stress threshold. That, that, that's that's right. So the, now all the experts, you know, they, they generated even more pressure on us. No, but I feel very good to to have you guys uh, um yeah um, as a partner. So uh, if there is any questions, any details, we know you are so helpful um in 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 supporting in supporting us, right? Um so yeah, um then at the end, I would like to say thank you for everyone. Um, and if there is any more questions, um, even for, for the audience, just type your questions in the chat. We will make sure that uh, all questions will be answered. And yeah, we, we would be very happy um, to uh, see you in, in two weeks to our next webinar. And um, obviously, if there's any application coated or electro polished or both or and heated, <laughs> um, yeah, I think now we we found some companies who can help you with that. Thank you very much and uh, stay safe. Bye bye. Bye, bye guys. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.